Greece, the place where Occidental history, philosophy, sculpture, taste for life and beauty, polity, in other words, the place our, where our culture was born. In spring 19, my very good friend and partner in sail, Gianluca, had to move his boat, a beautiful Grand Soleil 43, from Lavrion, right south of Athens, to Puntala in Tuscany. Spring in the Mediterranean is the most magic of seasons. In Greece, it is pure ecstasy. We arrived a few days earlier in order to prepare the boat for the crossing, anyway, about 1,000 miles, and we enjoyed some of the nice restaurants in the surroundings. Gianluca likes to point out some facilities that he used during the two years during which the boat stayed in Olympic Marina. Close to the harbor, there is Caposunio with the amazing Poseidon temple on the top. Nothing to add, just one in your lifetime, come here. We also had time to pay a one-day visit to Athens. We both knew the city, but it is always charming to be here. The day before leaving arrived the rest of the crew, Antonio and the wife Sabina and her sister Flavia. We left at dawn, heading Corinth Canal, the impressive artificial passage through Peloponneso and mainland. The ancient emperors began it, but it was completed only in 1880. It is a little expensive and takes time because it is narrow, so it is crossed alternatively south to north and north to south. <laughs> After the canal, we crossed the never-ending Corinth Gulf and the following day we arrived at Argostoli in Cefalonia.
one day stop to recoup energies and then straight to Rocella Ionica, an hospitable harbour on the Union coast of Calabria. In case you are in a crossing in these seas, Rocella is a very good reference. After Rocella, we headed to Panarea, one of the Olen Islands, where we had another day of pause, and then straight to Ponza, the magic island not far from Rome. Here Antonio prepared his pasta con le cozze, pasta with mussels, and Sabrina got a ferry to run back to her office. After this very pleasant rest, we continued our transfer up to Punta Ala, the beautiful marina in front of El Baila. At the beginning of spring 2019, Gianluca and I went to Barcelona with an ambitious project. Refit the wooden interior of by myself. That, after the last round of world tour plus the miles I did in the previous two years, was quite tired. Angela, Gianluca's partner, came to support us morally. All a week long we painted and edited the amazing Spanish and Catalana kitchen. And, at last, I can tell we did the more than acceptable job. After a few weeks we came back and after a due anti fooling we were ready to leave to Cabo Palos. The cruise was nice, even if it was Easter and it was still chilly, especially during the night. During the crossing there is the beautiful archipelago of Columbretes, but also this time we weren't able to stop by. It is a natural reserve, there is nothing but a faro, uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure it is a magic place. In Cabo Palos, there were to wait us Angela with her friend Raquel, plus sounds and friends. Cabo Palos is an amazing village, active since Phoenician times, then the Romans, it's a super rich archaeological site. There are a lot of wrecks below the water around the Cape. We entered in the tiny marine of the village just using our connections with locals. But I can tell that it is a small harbor and there is poor depth at the entrance, so if you plan to visit the area and it deserves a visit, you can go or at San Pedro de Piñatar at the entrance of the lagoon or directly to Cartagena. Be sure to book before. During Easter, we enjoyed the Semana Santa with never-ending processions with costumes, trucks and lifted transporting featurette from the Vangelo natural side, full buildings decorated for the occasion. Honest, 
it is a little creepy, but really impressive. After a few days, we said hello to our friends and continued our route. So in something less than three days, we finally arrived at La Linea de la Concepcion in Marina Alcaidesa on the Spanish side of Gibraltar Cape, one of the borders of Europe. In front of us there was Africa. In La Linea de la Concepcion, my recommendation for the restaurant is uh, Los Hermanos Tomilleros, a very nice uh, cocina casera restaurant in the center of La Linea de la Concepcion. If you need uh, any parts for your boat, you can find a nice ship chandler close to the shipyard on the other side of the harbor. Arriving at La Linea de la Concepcion, uh, it's not very easy. It is a sort of border town and uh, you have two alternatives, Malaga or Sevilla Airport. As I did want to spend a couple of days in Sevilla, I arrived there and then took a bus over four hours. A valid alternative is Bla Bla Car. In that case, I had too many baggage with me. In La Linea de la Concepcion, I mounted the new autopilot that only worked once in all summer. And uh, after a few days arrived Tammy, ready to go with me to the continent on the other side of the strait, Africa. It's a wonderful country and an and, and amazing cruise. Uh, but I want to give you some small hints to ease your life. The first thing to know as a yachtsman is keep in mind that you cannot enter or exit the country from the sea, from wherever you like. There are some entry ports that are authorized to give you permission to enter the country, all the others not. So, Main port on the Atlantic side are Tanger, that is big amazing city, Rabat, that is the capital, and El Jadida, as far as I know. But uh, I'm not sure if Esawira is also an entry port. Uh, you can have a check. Unfortunately, I, I, I was in Tanger, in, in El Jadida, and in a small fishing port that is uh, Asila wonderful so when you enter or exit uh, an entry port you will have a stamp on your passport an entry stamp and an exit stamp and it has uh, a um, validity during a certain period of time so that allows you to go also in uh, uh, not entry ports when you arrive in a port that is not an entry port you have to leave with the same crew that arrived I tell you, personal experience, this may be a real problem. So if you enter in, three person screw in Tangeri, uh, then you go to a port that is not an entry port, for example, Larachi, you can't have one that takes the plane from Larachi because you will not be allowed to exit then from Larachi with a person less. You will have port authority and custom visit personally your boats in every port, in entrance and, uh, and going out. You're not allowed to take with you weapons, drugs and drones. And the most forbidden is not, exact, is not necessarily the first. Another thing to keep in mind is that apart Tanja Marina, that is a very modern uh, and well-built uh, marina, all other harbors I saw, they have mainly 
ancient Portuguese uh, harbors or fishing harbors, uh, and harbors in rivers. So you hardly have a good depth for your boat. So if your boat is more than 35 feet or have, uh, doesn't have a lifting keel, if your boat have a beam of, uh, over 1 meter 80, plan very carefully your trip here. We arrived in Tanger, that is an amazing city. The ancient Medina, the souk, the castle, all in very good shape. In Morocco, you can see all the different, the different souls of a country very tied to his past, historical and religious, but that, that has full title to have his space in modern world. So in Tanger, you will find the brand new Tanja Marina that is uh, super equipped and uh, well served. Uh, and I guess that can easily become in the future a real alternative to the expensive and hard to reach by plane harbors in Gibraltar and in La Lina de la Concepción. In Tanger, you can see people in traditional dress and people practicing jogging or yoga in the vast green areas. There are plenty of nice bars and restaurants. My favorite overall is the Salon Bleu with its wonderful terrace and unique view. If you go there, get a tagine of chicken lemon. Amazing. We rented a taxi for one day and we visited Chef Shawen on the reef mountains. An amazing village, all blue, specialized in colors for fabrics. I read that in the 70s this was one of the favorite destinations for hippies and for painters. Uh, I guess I can imagine why. We left Tanger heading 30 miles south in Asila, a cozy fisherman village on the coast. Asila is only a fishing harbor, so it is not equipped for pleasure craft. You have to arrive only with high tide. During the summer it is about 3 meters. With low tide you will probably touch the bottom at the entrance. Then you can stay at the main pier side mooring where they will tell you to be. Or in the area in front of the entrance anchored. But I'm not sure there is always enough depth there. And I saw, I noticed that there is some swell sometimes. At the entrance, stay reasonably on the right side, entering. Uh, better if you have some boat passing to show you the way. Usually they are very gentle. In Asila, the Medina is super nice. There are plenty of tourists from Morocco and from Spain. Years ago, the major opened the village to painters and artists, so there is a very animated cultural life. The restaurant you cannot miss is Casa Garcia. This is Spanish owned and unites good Spanish cooking and good Moroccan cooking. Good wines and class A service. Antonio, the owner, lives here since decades and supervises personally everything. The fish market in Asila is every day a surprise. Sure fishes, marlin, tunas, lobsters, also sharks. You can buy the fish of the day at very good prices. Well, I am aware that for experienced uh, North Atlantic or North European sailors, uh, the tide uh, is something usual uh, to consider. But to me, a Mediterranean sailor, tide here without floating pontoons uh, is something <laughs> remarkable. I spent a few days in Asila, so I could enjoy the nice beaches around where you can go by a regular taxi, collective taxi or also by truck. Basically the beaches around are Las Cuevas, Las Palomas, Ola de Hermes, Sidi Mugay. Las Cuevas is very nice and well served. 
with cheating Guidos and some beds all over. Sidi Mugait Beach, near the Polo Ranch of the Hermes owner. Here you can spend an amazing day at Shemunir with the wonderful beach with your waiter that will give you what you want. And in case you can also sleep in the cottages, Shemunir rents. Angela, the partner of Gianluca, is in a bit way here. So she came with the sons and rented a super fancy house right in the center of the Medina. A typical Moroccan home that reminds me of the typical ancient Rome homes with a central open area, a, an open court that gives fresh air to all the rooms also on the upper floor. I wish I could spend some time to relax here. In Morocco you can buy everything at the market. Thousands of shops, mini shops, trucks, banquets, blankets on the ground, people from all over, smells around. of spices and of every kind of food, cats, beggars, it's uh, like a bombing to your senses. I love it. Another remarkable harbor for your cruise in Morocco is El Jadida. This is an entry port and as most of the Moroccan ports is not equipped for pleasure craft so you will have to stay anchored in the free space and to use the dinghy to, to go ashore but this really deserves its visit. There is the ancient Portuguese fort right on the sea with the Medina inside. Amazing. The white and colored market where you can buy everything. The entrance and the port are well protected. Well, what to tell? I loved Morocco. I would like to go back soon. Hello everybody. I know, I know. I look like Michelangelo's Moses. I have not trimmed my barb since the beginning of the lockdown uh, seven weeks ago. But it was supposed to, do, to, 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 to last uh, two weeks, so really there, there are two months now in Italy. Uh, so I'm stuck here in Rome uh, by myself. My boat is stuck in uh, Cabo Verde waiting for me. I'm pretty sure she's thinking of me as the, at least as much as I'm thinking of her. That's life. What to do? I have to tell that uh, if it wasn't for the quarantine, I would have never begun this uh, travel blog. So, uh, nothing is useless, as Buddy say. We left Tanger in a nice morning of July, directed to La Graziosa, 550 miles to go southwest. During the summer, the weather is quite variable, but the Portuguese Alice is dominant, so it is easy to get a favorable window to go in that direction. The crew was composed by Angela, Gianluca and me. Our average speed is between 130 and 150 miles per day, so it took about 4 days to get to Canaries. The crossing was sweet and we arrived just 12 hours before a perturbation from north. The harbor was packed, so we had to wait anchored in the bay uh, close the harbor, Playa Francesa, nice and safe. Close to Alhuaca, another Italian boat in aluminium of the navigator, Italian navigator Davide Zerbinati, which was here to go to Las Palmas to attend the ARC. La Graciosa is an amazing small island just north of Lanzarote. There are no paved streets, wonderful spots to swim, some nice bars to hang on the harbor and a very good restaurant where we had a lunch and a dinner. El Marinero, Canarian family cooking.
After La Graciosa, we headed directly to Puerto Calero Marina, in the south part of Lanzarote. I chose Puerto Calero to leave the boat because it is a very safe harbor and because before me all my friends who are blue water sailors stopped here. Giovanni Malcuori from Papayaga, Lilia Roberto Travani from Ganesh III and the same by myself with her previous owner Antonio Sanson. Other nice marinas and that are also recent of recent constructions are Marina Lanzarote in Arrecife, which is the capital of the island, and Marina Rubicon, that just faces south in front of Fuerteventura. Canaries are a strange place, in front of Morocco, inhabited by prehistoric uh, populations, pirates, very good sailors. Cristoforo Colombo uh, stopped here before trying to go to Indies and uh, all the great expeditions uh, to visit Africa and, uh, and America started from here in, in the last 500 years. So they're a, a strategic point. Plus, that the mo most west Western uh, uh, Europe point, I mean, uh, after here there is the rest of the world. There is no more Europe, there is Africa, there is America, South America, whatever. So it is, it is something, they are something, and they are charming, um, they are volcanic, you, you have the impression to, to be on the moon, uh, plus you are in front of Sahara Desert, there's Morocco uh, on the coast, and uh, often the Sahara sand melts with the clouds and uh, the, there is a very particular light, pink light, that they name Kalima. By myself remained here from July to November. I went back and forth, I already had close friends here and I made good new friends. I discovered that to enjoy some swimming and cruising on the coast in these islands the only good period is September, otherwise there is too many wind. My suggestion to enjoy Lanzarote is definitely to rent a car. It's cheap and it's the best way, the only, to visit the island. The good spots on the island are the ones you can find in every guide here. But I would like to point to you what you really cannot miss. Famara. It is a very nice beach, uh, renowned for surfing. There are very good waves. Timanfaya is a volcanic park. Uh, the last eruption was 300 years ago, but uh, really you have the perception that it happened uh, five minutes ago. Very impressive. Coming here, you cannot miss the heritage of Cesar Manrique. He was an international artist operating in New York during the 70s. He was from here and he was a really great promoter and the spirit of the island. You can visit his museum that is really beautiful and uh, his home in Haria that opened a couple of years ago. Very beautiful. He was a painter and a sculptor and an architect. The Wines Road with all the vineyards protected by the rocks is very charming and uh, by the way wines here are good the grape is Malvasia and my favorite are Verbejo and Rubicon El Casco Antiguo in Arrecife is uh, very pittoresque and cozy El Charco lo uh, they call it El Charco and it's full of restaurants and bars Suggestions of nice restaurants and bars that I spotted during my staying in Lanzarote. All the warmly recommended. Any 
need. In Lanzarote, you can find any kind of provisioning and facility for your boat. It's a very good spot to start uh, your rest of the world tour. At the end of November, we moved to Gran Canaria. At first, with Ambiga Amano, her partner. We stopped in Isla Lobos, a very nice island just north of uh, Fuerteventura. It's a natural reserve and uh, cozy, charming. Ay, 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 ay. Canta no llores, porque cantando se alegre el cielito lindo los corazones. From there, we continued our way southwest. In Las Palmas, I had to wait a few days for the crew, uh, about 10. But in the meantime, I refined my skills with uh, ukulele. Uh, I met very, very nice people that rapidly became new friends. Uh, Hokan from Sweden and uh, Alfredo and Valentina from Lecce with their boat Ginziana. And I met also Massimo that is a solitaire uh, sailor with his boat Dilemma. Las Palmas Marina or Muelle Deportivo is the cheapest marina in Canaries. It's always full of boats. So better to reserve. Anyway, there is a very well protected bay just the side of the marina so you can reserve and wait there or just anchor there and go back and forth with the dinghy. Anyway, you have to declare your presence to the port authority and pay a symbolic fee. From Las Palmas starts the ARC, the rally regatta uh, that crosses the Atlantic every year. Uh, so if you are so lucky to be here when there is the start, it's, it's a very nice sea event to, to attend. If you are looking for crew or simply to hang and drinking a cold beer with other sailors, Sailor Bar is your spot, definitely. I guess the owner is Italian because the pasta was good and never overcooked. Here at last arrived Gianluca and Ambica and after a dude load of manzanilla wine we could left in direction Cabo Verde. After almost one month in uh, Gran Canaria my crew eventually arrived. Gianluca and Ambica. They arrived in the morning and we left right away the mooring in the afternoon. The cruise this time was 900 miles, a little more, from Gran Canaria, Canaries Islands, to São Vicente, Cape Verde. The first real oceanic passage for me together with by myself. By myself was ready in theory, but right out of the harbor, the main autopilot system, a Ray Marine Type 1, new brand new, etc., was blocked. So we had to put the second line, another Raymarine smart pilot, but with the smaller tiller. The waves were high three meters. After four days of navigation, also the second line of pilot gave up. So we had to use the third and last line, the Raymarine 2000. I was amazed to think that Antonio, the previous owner, sailed from New Zealand to Venice with that pilot. Now I have two Raymarine 2000. The day prior to arrive was my birthday, 57 years. Way too close to 60 in my opinion, but the best birthday I could wish. Sailing in ocean with my friends and my beloved by myself. We arrived to the island of São Vicente after about 7 days and 14 hours. Mindelo, the main town, has a very nice marina. As far as I know, the only marina in this part of Africa. None in Senegal, none in Gambia, none in Guinea-Bissau, and uh, I bet none in the southern part. Until South Africa, of course. The marina offers fresh water, non-drinkable, and electricity. It's a regular marina. In Mindelo, you can find 
provisioning and uh, a lot of facilities not everything but it is quite well organized there is a little swell in the marina but I didn't found that terrible in case you are sensitive maybe it is better for you to stay at the anchor we love Mindelo Gianluca and I were here just two years ago during the crossing with a catamaran The archipelago of Cape Verde lays in front of Senegal, about 300 miles. It is part of the same fault of Canaries and Azores. And the look is the very same of Canaries. Primordial volcanoes and nature that simply overwhelms you. Deep blue skies and wind. Wind. People here speak Portuguese and Creole. They have a very good attitude, at least the people I've met. Here, one of the good things to do is to get a taxi and take a tour of the island. So, we went up on the main mountain, Monte Verde, that is quite high, and when you arrive on top, it's quite chilly. Remember to take a sweater with you. And then, on the eastern part of the island, we had lunch at a very good, nice restaurant, Shelucha, Cabo Verdean style, of course, kitchen and, uh, and ambient. In the tour, don't miss this beach of Salamanca. You can, you can uh, have a swim and get a beer on the Chiringuito right on the beach. The landscape is amazing. We met here a Swiss man with a wife who was making kite surf through the waves. Maybe you remember the great Morna singer Cesaria Evora, who was from here, from Mindelo. And you can find here uh, really a lot of young, talented musicians and singers. The day after, we got a ferry and we went to Sant'Antao, the big island just in front of São Vicente. One hour ferry from Mindelo. In Sant'Antao, we rented a car and we had the full tour of the island. That is amazing. You start at the level of the sea with a rocky desert landscape and you arrive with pine woods 1500 meters high the mountain so the view is impressive and uh, is uh, amazing it looks like being in, uh, on the Alps when you're up After a few days, we got our plan back to Europe. Planning to be back here in three months, but it is 2020, so we all know it did not go like that. Now it is June, still 2020, and I'm still stuck in Rome, my hometown. Aiming to go to my boat and fix what I need to cross the ocean next November, if this will be possible. Nobody knows. Let's hope for the best.